Welcome, everyone. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for our, the, our national anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Thank you to the MBPS Choir for that wonderful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. And thank you, Evan Hashimi, for leading us in the pledge and for your service as president of the National Honor Society a title that you can proudly enjoy for about the next two hours. <laughs> my name is Bruce Fawcett, and I'm the assistant head of school, and it is my honor to welcome students, parents, faculty, trustees, friends, and especially our graduating seniors to the North Broward Preparatory School <laughs> to the North Broward Preparatory School's commencement ceremony honoring the class of 2019. It's okay. I also want to welcome a special group of people watching this ceremony across the country and around the world as it is being live streamed on the web. This group includes North Anglia leadership and faculty and staff from over 60 schools that make up the North Anglia family of schools. Also watching this evening are friends and family in the over 25 countries that our seniors this year call home. I'd like to introduce the administrators on stage to my right. In the front row, Ms. Tanya Lynch, high school assistant principal. Ms. Elise Eckhoff, our head of school. And this year's commencement speaker, Mr. James Standifer, director of the Lighthouse Point Academy. And in the back row, from your left to right, Mr. Michael Ostrowski, director of athletics. Mr. Kervin Saunders, Director of Residential Life. Mr. Chris Petruzzi, Director of Fine Arts. And Mr. John Lehman, our Managing Director.
I'd also like to thank FAU and their staff for their dedication to this event. This evening, we will reflect on the past and mark the end of a journey for the class of 2019. This evening is also a time to look ahead, to be inspired and to dream of what could come. But perhaps most importantly, it is a time to be appreciative of the present. This one final time that all of us will be in the presence of this diverse and talented group of young adults, and most probably the last time they will all be together. Tonight, as we recognize these individuals on stage, you may observe some wearing cords or medals of distinction that they have earned during their time here at North Broward. Our IB diploma candidates can be recognized by their blue cords. The national, yeah, we can applaud that. <laughs> national Honor Society members can be recognized by their gold cords. The National Spanish Honor Society members can be recognized by their red and gold cords. The National French Honor Society members can be recognized by their blue, red, and white cords. The National Science Honor Society can be recognized by their green, gold, and purple cords. Rho Kappa National Social Studies uh, Society members can be recognized by their blue and white cords. <laughs> members of Mu Alpha Theta Math Honor Society will be wearing their blue and gold cords. <laughs> National Arts Society members will be wearing their appropriately multicolored cords. Tri-M Music Honor Society can be recognized by their pink cords. Our community highest achievement for community service honorees can be recognized by their purple cords. Our Silver Knights can be recognized by their silver cords. Seniors who have distinguished themselves through their dedication to this year's yearbook are wearing their honorable medallions with their white ribbons. And our student government leaders are wearing gold medallions with purple ribbons. Students, there won't be a test. It is my pleasure to share this special time with all of our soon-to-be graduates and with you. It is now time for our traditional pictorial dedication to this class to remind, us of the, to remind them of the privilege it has been to be part of their lives, of part of the lives of some very special young men and women.
until my moment comes, I'll say, I, I did it all. I, I did it all. I loved every second that this world could give. to me tonight There is still baby music left to write What else could I do I'm so inspired by you That hasn't happened for the longest time Once I thought my innocence was gone Now I know that happiness goes on That's when you found me when you put your arms around me, I haven't been there for the longest time.
lessons there to learn and then dig deeper. Read your intuition, don't leave anything unturned. Be the seeker of the truth. Come of age with our young nation. We'll bleed and fight for you. We'll make it right for you. If we lay a strong enough foundation, we'll pass it on to you. We'll give the world to you and you'll blow us all away. I close my eyes and I can see a world that's waiting up for me that I call my own. Through the dark, through the door, through when no one's been here before, but it feels like home. They can say, they can say it all sounds crazy. 
say, they can say I've lost my mind. I don't care, I don't care, so call me crazy. We can live in a world that we desire. say they can say it all sounds crazy and they can say they can say we've lost our mind i don't care i don't care if they call me crazy run away into a world that we design you think you won't find it tied to someone else Ooh, said it's true that the growing only happens on your own they don't know me and you
just what you need. You can change right next to me. Let's give one more big round of applause for the choir. That is amazing. I think what I really love about the pictorial dedication is it reinforces how far these young men and women have come. So let's hear it for the class of 2019 as well. Congratulations. I want to thank the senior class officers for your hard work putting the pictorial dedication together for this evening. And at this time, I'd like to invite the senior class officers to the stage to present their senior class gift to the head of school. So would Sydney Austin, Xiao Shi Yang, Xi Yu Guo, and Mateo Pena please come to the stage. The memories at North Broward will forever be stored in our hearts, and we thank the teachers and administration for helping us carve a path for our futures. On behalf of the senior officers, I would like to thank the seniors here tonight for allowing us to represent you all this year at North Broward. The class of 2019 would like to donate patio furniture for the lakeside balcony to North Broward as a symbol of gratitude for being our home the past four years. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah? Okay. We hope that future students use this furniture and think of it as home like the class of 2019 did. Thank you seniors for an amazing year. Congratulations and let's get this bread people! One more time, I'd like to thank the senior class officers for their leadership this year. It's been a really wonderful year under their leadership. At this time, I'd like to invite Ms. Tanya Lynch and Ms. Elise Eckhoff 
up to help distribute the class honors and awards. So each year, every discipline has the opportunity to recognize a senior who has demonstrated excellence in that discipline. Excellence in English, for excellence in English, the English department recognizes Jessica Markman. For excellence in mathematics, the department recognizes Jacob Sandler. For excellence in the natural sciences, the department recognizes Jenna Burns. For excellence in the social sciences, the department recognizes Anissa Mansour. For excellence in world languages and cultures, the department recognizes Ethan D. Egidio. For excellence in English, for speakers of other languages, the ESOL department recognizes Marat Kornyev. For excellence in the academic technology, the department recognized Sam Luides. <laughs> For excellence in science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics. This year's STEAM Award goes to Evan Hashimi. <laughs> the Fine Arts Department would like to recognize the following students. For excellence in music, Gianna Milan. For excellence in theater, Juliana McCabe.
for Excellence in Media Arts, Blake Houston. For excellence in visual arts, Sydney Sabota. For excellence in dance, Catherine Deo. Give them one more big round of applause. Again, all those awards go to students who have distinguished themselves within a specific area of study. The next class of awards are North Broward's highest individual all school awards determined by the faculty and administration. The Principal's Recognition Award is presented to that graduating senior who has demonstrated outstanding academic and personal growth during their senior year and who has made significant and positive contributions to the school and community. I proudly congratulate this year's recipient of the Principal's Award, Brooke Dodrell. The Blue and Gold Award is given to the graduating senior who possesses those qualities that embody the well-rounded student excelling in academics, extracurricular activities, and service. The member of the 2019 class receiving the Blue and Gold Award is Eitan Pessa. The Golden Eagle Award is given to the graduating senior who embodies the true spirit of the school, exhibiting qualities characterized by enthusiasm and love for the school through outstanding dedication, devotion, and loyalty. This year's Golden Eagle Award is given to Dylan Rosenthal. The Faculty Award recognizes the student who consistently and through all subjects demonstrates intellectual curiosity, shares a joy for learning, and produces work of the highest standard. This year, the Faculty Award is given to Benjamin Altschuler. I now ask Mr. Standifer and Ms. Gresset 
to join me in presenting this year's LPA Director's Recognition Award. Thank you, Mr. Fawcett. The Lighthouse Point Academy Director's Recognition Award is presented to the graduating senior who represents the best of the senior class, including academic achievement, character, integrity, work ethic, and who makes a positive contribution to the class and school, and who demonstrates outstanding personal and academic growth throughout high school. We would like to present this year's LPA Director's Recognition Award to Brendan Stern. The award for international understanding is given to a student who is a good representative of his or her, her own country with a positive attitude toward the life and culture of others, able with the ability to bring different people together in a sense of community, thus fostering the cause of international understanding. The award for international understanding is given to Lai Ying Ivy Tam. The Scholar Athlete Award is given to the male and female graduating senior, each of whom maintains a high academic standing and embodies true team spirit and sportsmanship. This year's female Scholar Athlete is Madeline Wilson. This year's male scholar athlete is Logan Clyatt. <laughs> the head of school award is given to the graduating, graduating senior who exemplifies our school's honor code, embodying the qualities and characteristics around which the, co the code is formulated, respect for school, self, others, and respect for academic honesty at all times. I ask Ms. Eckhoff to present the class of 2019 head of school award to this year's honoree, Nicholas Mancini. The Montgomery Award is given to graduating seniors who have the longest tenure at North Broward Preparatory School and who, and who better to award this distinction to our record number of 29 NBA lifers than their kindergarten teachers. I would like to welcome to the stage Ms. Karen Zwirling, Ms. Denise Irwin, and Ms. Claire Law so they can present these awards.
So there are 29 of these, so I'm going to read them, and then we're going to give them applause at the end. Benjamin Altuler. Zachary Beers. Christiana Canizio. Brooke Dodrell. Carly Dvorkin. Scott Dvorkin. Jason Ford. Tess Frisman. Catherine Gittleman. Alejandro Gonzalez. Rachel Grubman. Going a little too fast. Sarah Hershenson, Blake Houston, Hillary Jacobs, William Julian, Nicholas Kazma. Rachel Lambert. Andrew Liao. Nicholas Mancini. Juliana McCabe. William Miguel. Maxwell Meyerson. Harrison Road. Dylan Rosenthal. Joseph Streibman. Michael Sheehan. Tyler Struve. Matthew Sumislowski. And last but certainly not least, Jason Vest. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2019 Montgomery Award recipients. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to recognize two individuals who have distinguished themselves by earning the two highest grade point averages in this year's senior class. This is the traditional awarding of medals to our valedictorian and salutatorian. The class of 2019's salutatorian 
is Madeline Wilson. The class of 2019 valedictorian is Nicholas Mancini. At this time, I'd like to invite Nick to give the traditional valedictorian speech at commencement. Thank you. Yes, so how are you all doing? I imagine uh, most of you are a little bit better than me right now, but uh, <laughs> good evening to the administration, faculty, families, friends, everyone watching around the world on the live stream, our Nord Anglia family across 61 schools, and most importantly, the class of 2019. Yes. So tonight is considered our time of celebration. But first, let's not forget all the people who got us here. Our parents, our teachers, and our peers have been as fundamental to our growth as our own individual motivations. North Broward, as well, has been incredibly important and provided a truly formative influence on our lives, or even perhaps a summative one, considering how important <laughs> it was. Uh, Th therefore, I feel as though it would be a misstep to deliver a send-off message to our seniors without first giving a round of applause to everyone who helped us get here. So. <laughs> Additionally, on behalf of the class, I would like to take this opportunity to wish Ms. Eckhoff well and uh, thank her for everything she's done for North Broward. Yeah. yeah. Actually, 13 years ago when I started here in kindergarten, she was uh, the principal when I was a long, long time ago. And while I've grown up through North Broward, she's certainly risen through the ranks. And while I'm sure that everyone in this room is sad to see you go, we cannot wait to see all that you accomplish. So thank you. So tonight I'm going to share with you three ideas, all of them, though, centering around change. And interestingly enough, they boil down to one, you should change, two, you should not change, and three, you are change. So my first thought is about why you should change. So if you can, think back to your time during elementary school. For those of you who, like me, were at North Broward, this was a time when carnival rides populated the front field, a time before the stress of high school, and a time when our greatest concern was that of lunch and recess. Many of you, though, who didn't go to North Broward might have gone to school in a different city, a different state, or even perhaps a different country. So in order to sort of think back, I want you to think for a second about what you were like, what did you do, what did you care about, and most importantly, who did yourself then compare to who you are right now? And I was sort of interested in finding the answers to these questions, so I went back and read one of my assignments from fourth grade. So here it is, my fourth grade reunion party, poorly drawn image and all. But basically, in preparation for my fourth grade 20th year reunion party, I had to write a little essay about my time from fourth grade all the way to adulthood. And there are some quotes from here that I want to share with all of you tonight. Uh, it's dated June 2011, and just for those who, like me, can't distinguish 2011 from any other year, this was the school year that Angry Birds was created. So it was kind of a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> so here are some of the things that I said in my essay. First thing, I played second base on the baseball team when we won regionals. Now the problem is, while our baseball team certainly is incredible, I was not a part of their journey. <laughs> Second thing that I said, I'm going to Arizona State University. 
Once again, this also isn't true as after there was a change in interest for me, ASU didn't even appear on my list and I don't think I've even ever been to the state of Arizona. <laughs> but <laughs> third one, and this is my favorite one, get ready for this. I'm eventually going to win Rookie of the Year after getting drafted by the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> I think that, I think this is the time when you're supposed to laugh at rather than with me. Uh, but sadly, considering I haven't played baseball in a good four years, I don't think that this dream is going to materialize into a reality. There is, however, one thing that I said in this essay that did come to fruition. Just for some background, I have spent the majority of my time in high school dedicated to North Broward's debate team. But I didn't even know that the program existed uh, till I joined the debate in seventh grade. So given this, I hope that all of you could understand my surprise when I saw that my fourth grade self said this, and I'm reading verbatim. I remember all the activities I did at North Broward. I was on the debate team, I remember. We won so many debates, I cannot even remember how many debates that we won. So, <laughs> first of all, I had way, way, way too much confidence back then, and now as I'm speaking in front of all of you, I'm wondering where it went. But. <laughs> More importantly, at nine years old, I had no clue what debate was, and I honestly just remember throwing it into my essay because it sounded cool. So the point of sharing that with all of you was not to demonstrate how ridiculous it was that my mom was able to find a piece of fourth grade work within minutes of me asking, <laughs> but rather to show you how much we can change as we pursue our education. At that time, my life was entirely consumed by sports, and I would have been severely disappointed to learn that the majority of my weekends in high school were spent inside at debate tournaments. Many of you were probably like me. In middle school or high school, we had a radical shift in our interests, and now we feel as if there's that one thing that we have to do with our lives. Some of you, though, may have known what you've wanted to do with your schooling and your education for a very long time. Now, regardless of which group that you fall into, I want to remind and caution you against being too narrow-minded. Go beyond your comfort zone and try some new things because the class or the club that you sign up for next year just because, why not, might end up becoming your new life passion. Who knows what you're gonna be like in four years, even six months from now. So take some risks and be open to the possibility of new opportunities. I wish for all of you to be passionate, dedicated, motivated, and at the same time, comfortable with change. My second thought, though, is that you should not change. So around two months ago, I was given what I think is a pretty neat task. My math teacher, Ms. Barbag, handed our class slips of paper with the instruction of writing a letter to our future selves. And the cool part, though, is that we had to write this letter but seal it in an envelope and attach a forever stamp. And thankfully, the name was intuitive because I had no clue what a forever stamp was. And like many of my peers, I'm not really sure how the mail works in general. But <laughs> regardless, in five years when I will have graduated college, uh, I will receive a letter that I wrote my senior year of high school. So while writing this letter, I understood, of course, that my interests would change, my hobbies would change, other things would change. But there was one thing that I refused to be comfortable with. There seems to be this idea that after high school, you sort of lose touch with your friends and just move on. But the problem is I love each and every one of my friends way too much to just accept that as the truth. The thought that the people I've spent every class, every weekend, and every event with will at some point not be a part of my life truly frightens me. And because of that, I gave myself a challenge. While I was writing this letter, I made a promise to myself that Upon opening it, if I hadn't been in contact with any of my friends from high school, at that very instant, no matter what I was doing, I was going to drop everything and reach out to my beloved high school companions. And whether this is your first year at North Broward, you've been here all of high school, middle school, or even elementary school, I imagine that the bonds you have for formed during this time are cherished in your memories. In a few months, we are about to embark into the unknown territory of a new school, a new environment filled with tons of new people. So why should we leave our greatest weapon, support from our friends, behind? So while you can go ahead and change your interests, change your passions, never forget the people who accompanied you on your journey. <laughs> yeah, you can clap. But... So my final thought for all of you is that you are change. And this is the most important one to me because as a class and as a group of people, 
we have such a capacity to help others. While the former two ideas were told through previous assignments of mine, this one will be told through the impeccable accomplishments of the class of 2019. Overall, this graduating class has accumulated over 67,000 hours of community service. And yes, this number is impressive in and of itself, but what's even more meaningful is what us as seniors has done, what we've done during these hours. This year alone, our class has organized a plethora of events to help people around us. Things like the Dance Marathon for the Children's Miracle Hospital, the Teen Political Forum to get the youth and elected officials involved, volunteering at the Give Kids the World Village in Disney, the St. Baldrick Shave-a-thon and countless walks for different charities do not go unnoticed, but are materially transforming the lives of people around us in our community and beyond. And it is now essential that all of you take this ethos of change with you not only into college, but also carry it with you throughout the rest of your life. So rather than leaving you with an uplifting message, perhaps about the value of hard work, this is in some sense a call to action. And everything you do from here on out, I wish for you to critically reflect on what you are doing, but how you can go even further to impact others in a positive way. And looking at it from this perspective, since we are all the driving force within society, each and every one of you is in fact change. Now, well, I know that this speech is near the bottom of the things that you'll remember from your time in high school. I hope that you can maybe cling on to just 10 words. You should change, you should not change, and you are change. Because when you are pursuing your passions within a group that loves and supports you, and you are striving to make the world just a little bit better, I believe that we are truly unstoppable. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas, for that. What I think is truly inspiring, heartwarming, and reassuring message from one of the leaders within this group. You know, as I listened to you and I thought about the different stages that you were touching on, it, it, it reminded me how long I've known you and how much I've seen you grow and how much I've seen the individuals in this pro class grow. And I am really proud, not of you, Nick, only, but of all of you. And I'm so excited to watch you go out in the world and do great things. Thank you again, Nicholas, for that message. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure now to introduce Dylan Rosenthal and Miss Tanya Lynch, who will introduce this year's commencement speaker. Good evening. My name is Tanya Lynch and I serve as the assistant principal of the high school, graduating senior and student government executive president and former member of my third grade class. Dylan Rosenthal and I have the privilege of introducing our esteemed graduation speaker, selected by the senior class, our head of school, Elise Ekoff. Mrs. Elise Eckhoff is currently in her seventh and final year as head of school for North Briar Preparatory School. During her tenure at MBPS, she has served in many roles, including lower school principal, curriculum director, and assistant head of school. Elise earned a bachelor's degree in elementary education from Florida International University, a master's degree in education leadership from Nova Southeastern University, and she is currently pursuing her doctoral degree in educational leadership at Lynn University. Mrs. Eckhoff's many accomplishments include expanding our campus to include the Global, the Global Wellness Center, the International Village, and many reimagined classroom spaces that inspire students and enable authentic learning. 
Her legacy lives not only in our beautifully evolving campus, but in the hearts and minds of the students and faculty who have benefited from her strong and compassionate leadership. As Mrs. Elise Eckhoff moves into a new role within the education team for Nord Anglia Education, she leaves a legacy that lives and breathes in the culture of our community. As John Steinbach said, I have come to believe that a great teacher is a great artist. Teaching might even be the greatest of the arts since the medium is the human mind and spirit. I think that Mrs. Eckhoff embodies the great artist that Steinbeck is referring to. She has often shared her incredible words of wisdom and we look forward to hearing her thoughts on this very special occasion. Please help us welcome Mrs. Eckhoff to the podium. So good evening. First of all, I want to thank Mrs. Tanya Lynch and uh, for giving me this wonderful welcome and for Dylan, someone I've known since he was uh, in a stroller, to, uh, to come up and honor me this way. That's really incredible. Um, but I am a little mad because nobody told me I was going to have to follow Nicholas Mancini, one half of the National Policy Debate Championship team. Um, so. Give him another round of applause. That's pretty daunting. <clears throat> but I'm going to do my best. After their meteoric rise to fame on the phenomenon that is the HBO television series Game of Thrones, actresses Maisie Williams and Sophie Turner shared openly about their struggles with self-esteem and self-confidence. Pulitzer Prize winning author John Steinbeck doubted his own skill and talent expressing in his diary that his work wasn't good enough, even while writing his quintessential novel, The Grapes of Wrath. Thomas Jefferson only gave two speeches in his entire presidency due to his fear of public speaking. And while nobody besides Jefferson doubted the brilliance of his words, he delivered both speeches in a barely audible whisper. He probably would have been great on Twitter, but unfortunately, it wasn't available yet. Lady Gaga, Guardians of the Galaxy actor Chris Evans, Cleveland Cavalier Kevin Love, and numerous actors, musicians, politicians, and athletes admit to experiencing feelings of doubt so painful, sometimes so powerful, that it prevented them from doing what they love. Which made me wonder, if people who even after achieving tremendous success in their chosen careers, can feel such nagging doubt, how can the rest of us move beyond the natural trepidation that comes from trying to achieve our goals to live the life we imagine? To be perfectly candid, I have faced those same crises of confidence periodically in my life. I tell you this not because I consider myself a celebrity, but because I think it's much more common than Instagram, Snapchat filtered lives might lead you to believe. But even though I've experienced that nagging feeling of not being worthy just a moment or time or two throughout my life, I have managed to move beyond my doubts, to spend my time on this earth doing what I love, surrounded by people that I love. And it is my personal experiences that I draw upon now to share with you in our last few moments together as head of school and high school students. So what I've come to realize is that each of us, regardless of our age, must continuously navigate three inevitables in our lives. Transitions, decisions, and dispositions. These inevitables are part of our human experience. They're defining moments and chosen mindsets that influence the path we take, the choices we make, and ultimately the lives we lead. Understanding and embracing the unknowns that come from these three inevitables, transitions we experience, decisions we make, and dispositions we choose made a difference for me, and it might make a difference for you too. So let's start with transitions. The dictionary defines transitions as the process or period of changing from one state or condition to another. A great many transitions occur naturally, and reflect the cycle from childhood through adulthood. 
moving from lower to middle to high school, and the one that you're about to embark on from high school to college. We transition from student to wage earner, hopefully, child to parent, dependent to independent. We move locations, we just move on, we experience love and loss. But these natural seasons of our lives cause fundamental shifts in who we are. Some barely noticeable at first, and some that instantly feel seismic. The problem with transition is that people confuse it with change. Transition is not change. Change is an act. Transition is a process. To paraphrase author William Bridges, change is situational. Transition, on the other hand, is psychological. You must do the inner work to redefine the self you will be after the change. Without a transition, a change is nothing more than rearranging the furniture. When I was 15, my family moved to Florida just before I was about to begin 10th grade. Of course I was nervous, but having moved just two years earlier, I thought my adjustment would happen quickly. I was wrong. My entire sophomore year was rough, and I struggled to find my place in a huge high school. What made the experience much more difficult was the self-imposed and unrealistic expectations I had set for myself. Navigating classes, learning the culture, and making friends were hard enough. Convincing myself that I would jump into a whole new environment without a period of mourning my old life was probably just me trying to cope. Looking back, I understand now that transitions are personal and unpredictable, even when we feel prepared. Sometimes it's a marathon and not a sprint. But you get there. I got there. And you will too. Some of you will ease into college as if you've been there your whole life. And others will need just a little bit more time. The key is to recognize that transitions are different for everyone and that your timetable is your own. Give yourself the space to grieve, the past if you need to, to confront your fears and to marvel at the metamorphosis that is occurring within and around you. Once you've had the time to reflect, gain your footing, lace up your sneakers, embrace each step, rely on your friends and your family, and know that something new and exciting is waiting when you cross that finish line. So let's move on to decisions. After senior year, you probably think you are experts at decision making. And at the very least, you have had quite a bit of practice this year. Choosing where to attend college is, for the majority of you, the single biggest decision of your life so far. And I'm guessing that you made your decision in a thoughtful way, analyzing pros and cons, weighing options, making campus visits, and talking with your college advisors, teachers, friends, and family. Big decisions are never easy, but many of them are the kind you can anticipate and thus prepare for. When I first became head of school, I read a book called Decisive, How to Make Better Choices in Life and Work by the Heath Brothers. I didn't think I was a bad decision maker, but I understood that in my new role, I would be faced with decisions every single day, some that I would have to make quickly. I knew my words and my actions would greatly impact students, and faculty, families, and our school community, and I wanted to be better prepared for that responsibility. I used a method developed by the book's authors countless times as a way to just give structure to my thoughts. It's based on the acronym RAP. W, widen your options. Recognize that everything is not an either or choice. Reality test your assumption, R. Don't look for solutions that just confirm your own bias. A, attain distance before deciding. Don't um, let emotion cloud your judgment. P, prepare to be wrong. Both understand the ramifications, both positive and negative, of your actions. The book Decisive has been a good resource for me, although it still doesn't help me figure out where I want to go to dinner on a Friday night, which drives my family crazy. Find out what works for you. But I would add one more P to the end of rap for people. Don't make decisions alone. The wisest decisions I have ever made have come after great conversation and consultation with others. But there will be times 
in your life, well, you will make decisions that challenge the essence of who you are. It's inevitable. Some decisions are just hard. As most of you know, and now everybody knows, I have made the decision to step down from my role as head of school at the end of this school year. This was for me the single most difficult decision I have ever made in my professional life. What gave me the confidence to make a decision that would forever change my life was the myriad of what if conversations I had with my family, friends, and trusted colleagues. A few hundred pints of Halo Top and the comfort of knowing that you can never really leave a place that you love. Sometimes you will be faced with choices where there are no easy answers. And sometimes you will need to allow yourself to be comfortably uncomfortable so that you can grow. And sometimes you'll just have to take a leap of faith. But hands down, the biggest decision you will make in your life, and one that is almost entirely within your control, is choosing the people you surround yourself with, personally and in a few years professionally. I would venture to say few decisions matter more. That brings us to dispositions. Martha Washington said, I have learned that the greatest part of our misery or unhappiness is determined not by our circumstance, but by our disposition. Some might think that was easy to say for someone who lived a seemingly charmed life. After all, she was our first first lady. It's easy to be happy when you are in a position of power or have acquired great wealth. But Martha Washington was not immune from tragedy. She suffered the loss of her first husband and two of her four children before the age of five. Dispositions. Whether we choose to see the glass, glass half empty or, laugh, or half full is up to us. Looking for the negative instead of finding the positive in people or situations is a tendency we should do our best to avoid. The lens in which we choose to view the world and the habits of mind we employ to frame the challenges we face, shape our circumstances, and profoundly influence the quality of our lives. So graduates, be the person who wakes up happy, even when you have an early class and it's freezing outside. Be positive when you could be negative. Be courageous when you could be afraid. Be patient when you could be frustrated. Be inclusive when you could be divisive. Be a change maker when you could be a bystander. Be humble when you could be an egotist. Be grateful when you could be greedy. Be bold when you could be meek. Be caring when you could be indifferent. Choose love. Choose hope. Who you are and the happiness you will experience personally and professionally is largely dependent upon you. Because life will throw you curveballs and it will sometimes seem unfair. You will make mistakes and your confidence will be wrecked. Transitions will test you and decisions will feel insurmountable. But I am here to tell you even if you're not looking to be the next Jon Snow, Lady Gaga, or Bruce Fawcett, you've already demonstrated that you have the confidence, intelligence, and tenacity to achieve your goals, because here you are. You've already proven to be a class with passion and heart. You've achieved unprecedented success in academics, arts, athletics, leadership, and service and you've just scratched the surface of your unlimited potential. Thank you to the class of 2019 for bestowing upon me this honor of a lifetime being your commencement speaker. Thank you to this incredible faculty. Thank you to this incredible faculty who support and sustain our exceptional learning community. Thank you to our families for the opportunity to share in this sacred journey with you and your child. Thank you to my family for being here today and always. Henry David Thoreau said, go confidently in the direction of your dreams, live the life you have imagined.
Congratulations to the class of 2019. Enjoy this moment and all of the magical moments to come. Thank you. At least I'm just going to take a moment of personal privilege here. I think I speak for everybody when I uh, express my gratitude for your eloquent, eloquent words, for your gentle and sometimes not so gentle push to improve, but most importantly for your friendship. You will be sorely missed. Thank you very much. And now back to the task at hand. Ms. Eckhoff. Board of Trustees, faculty, parents, guests, and members of the class of 2019. We are at the moment where the class of 2019 is officially presented to our extended community as graduates of North Broward Preparatory School. We are all eager to launch this remarkable group of individuals from our world into one that is wholly theirs. This moment is a defining one for these young adults. It marks the instant that high school ends for them. Their high school experience is something they know, filled with achievements ignited by an extremely talented and dedicated faculty and fueled by the support from friends and family. The school has helped shape them and they have helped shape our school. The class of 2019, in particular, will leave a lasting legacy as they move from this moment forward. Before they do, I'd like to remind them of a few things. Your families and your school have instilled in you values and helped you develop character that will guide you to make good choices. We have given you knowledge that you will convert into wisdom through your experiences. We have cultivated relevant skills and habits of mind that you will carry through the future just as much as they will carry you through the hardships and triumph, the future yet to unfold. This is the moment when your lives after high school begin. 
My job here today is to certify that you have fulfilled all the requirements to graduate, and you have. Each of you must certify to yourselves that your character is strong enough to endure an uncharted path in a world that is changing faster than ever. How exciting for us all to think of what you will do when you are out there. Ms. Eckhoff, we are sending a special group of students out of MBPS who bring the mission of the school to life in both word and deed. The class of 2019, a group forever connected, who can act as gracious, compassionate, and creative world citizens. At this time, I'd, in like, I'd like to invite our head of school, Ms. Elise Eckhoff, director of Lighthouse Point Academy, Mr. James Standifer, and our high school assistant principal, Ms. Tanya Lynch, to present diplomas to this distinguished group of seniors. Each row of students will be led to the stage by a member of the faculty specifically selected by this senior class for the honor of reading their names as they receive their diplomas. Jad Aliubi. Benjamin Grant Altschuler. Caro Ando. Emerson Arai. Julia Rose Archiola. Alexa Barry Aronson. Raqeb Azrez. Sydney Sierra Austin. Marcella Baselelo Goncalves. Cameron Bear. Anastasia Baranova. Vanessa Barchuk. Zachary Elvis Beers. James R. Bentayu. Kurt Bernard. Richard. Junior Bienname Parker John Bloder Shelby Galia Fabro Maya Simone Botek Tiago Brasilerio Feteso. Victoria Brian De Mora. Killian Brunet. Wow. 
Serena Elizabeth Bruno. Joshua Buker. Danielle Vicente Bugarelli. Gustavo Vicente Bugarelli. Yalizibieta Bulegina. Jenna Lynn Burns. Stefan Daniel Komet. Christiana Helen Canizio. Anthony Russell Sirisani. Guo Chen. Logan Alexander Clyatt. Liam McKay Cogswell. Jessica Cole. Roderick Charles Colbrick Jr. Matthew Roy Corlew. <laughs> Amanda Costa Dinez. Charlotte D'Amico. Lam Don Dow. Kuak Kinyan Dao. <laughs> Alessandro De Gasperi. Andrea De Quintana Dugarte. <laughs> James Decker. Austin Newman Declare. Morgan Kate DeSacia. Catherine Isabella Dio. Ethan D. Egidio. Nicholas Dirtz. James Christopher Dotus. Brooke Elizabeth Dodrill. Justin Tyler Doles. Jenny Don. Carly Page Dvorkin.
Scott Brandon Dvorkin. Jeremiah Elias Edward. <laughs> Gabriel Leonardo Esquivel. Max Ryan Fain. Benjamin Feltingoff. <laughs> Lillianne Haley Fenton. <laughs> Davi Cavalcanti Ferreira. Zachary Filippo. Jason R. Ford. William Parker Foss. Jonathan Wolf Franco. Kyle Friedman. Tess Frisman. Han Xiao Fu. Javier Alejandro Garcia. Chloe Gardner. Rachel Mara Gelb. Mark Ryan Geller. <laughs> Yang Do Nyak An. Katie Gittleman. David Jonathan Glick. Naya L. Goberville. Zachary Monroe Goldenberg. Dylan James Goldstein. Ariel Haley Goldwyn. Alejandro Gonzalez. Maximiliano Anthony Gonzalez.
Stacy Lynn Gringout. <laughs> Rachel Grubman. Alejandro Antonio Guerrero. <laughs> Hunter Genta. <laughs> Mingzi Guo. Shiyu Magical Guo. Anna Lena Yurekis. Fabian Guzman Correa. Harrison S. Haber. Stephen Handley. Evan Dariush Hashemi. Allison N. Pence. Vaklav Hess. Lena Moana Hilti. Sarah Lynn Hutchinson. Blake Charles Houston. Utah Hu. Okari Z. Hughes. Joseph Mayer Milad Iskander. Owen David Jackson. Hillary D. Jacobs. Yuting G. Yao Hao Jiang. William Alexander Julian. Joshua Taylor Kaplan. Trent Davis Kaplan. Nicholas James Kazma. Neve Keen. Mohammed Moeen Khalil. Jack Edward Killerman. Julia Kipperman.
Samantha Cares. Alexi Kian. Marat Korniev. Dylan Henry Kramer. Ryan Lewis Crane. Rachel Lambert. Ryan Max Laub. Kan Dan Jie Lu. Samuel Lewis. Lee Chen Yang. Lee Yun Hao. Lian Shi Di. Lin Jia Xin. Lin Zi Yu. Jared Matthew London. Lao Zhenji. Andrew Liao. Ethan Michael Lyon. Niv Magril. Zachary Joseph Mazes. Alante Major. Marie Majorel. Talia Rose Maman. Nicholas Mancini. Natalia Mangual. Sydney Manis. Nathaniel Solomon Mann. Anissa Mansour. Jessica Sarah Markman. Joshua Hamilton Marshall. Winston McBean.
Juliana Marie McCabe. Miao Xinping. Gianna Marie Milan. William Miguel, or yeah, William Miguel. Kean Sebastian Maroon. Brooke Mofshin. Maxwell J. Meyerson. Julia Nascimento. Joshua Eli Newmark. Morgan Newman. Zachary Newman. Win Duck No. Win and Min. Nam Hun Hai Win Dor Isabel Victoria Northside Amanda Orama Benjamin Tucker Ostro Melissa Uzbeler. Christian Joseph Paye. Victoria Parada Daros. Daniel Parker. <laughs> Mateo Pena. Lisa Pereria Fritas Nunez. Mateos Perem Chavez. Eitan Lavi Pesa. Stella Jane Picasso. (laughs) 
Jaden Sage Pinder. David Samuel Piskin. Bin Chi. Yu Wei Yu Chin. Giorgio Rabini. <laughs> John Pedro Reganti Bispo. Nicholas Anthony Rendon. <laughs> Niera Hibero Necho. Benjamin A. Rivera Maldonado. Harrison Ryan Road. Hugo Rodriguez. Camila Rodriguez. Gabriel Roos. Anna Clara Rosenbach Bora. <laughs> Dylan Maxwell Rosenthal. <laughs> Jordan Rosenthal. Dylan Rose Rothstein. <laughs> Sophia Lynn Rowland. <laughs> Madeline Ruskin. Sydney Sabota. Maya Eden Sachs. Maite Salim Sacker Santos Lima. Kayla Sadie Salzberg. <laughs> Jacob Aaron Sandler. <laughs> Zachary Schneider.
Joseph Adam Schreibman. Daniil Surpakov. Mert Efejan Sevimli. Shan Junze. Michael Richard Sheehan. Kaiwen Shi. Lola Miriam Rose Silverstein. Ethan Michael Sim. Vanessa Suarez da Silva. Yutao Song. Adrian Soto. Reagan Nicole Stern. Alexia Storescu. Brendan Stern. Tyler C. Struve. Colin Stewart. Alexandra Stutman. <laughs> Matthew John Sumislavsky. Ao Sun. Three who ta Lai Ying Ivy Tam Vinicius Teixeira Mello. Anthony J. Tomzak. Yudze Tong. Brian Wynn Tran. Michaelo Vexler. <laughs> Natalie Velasquez. <laughs> Carolina Veller.
Samantha Venable. Jason Michael Vest. Gustavo Vienna Volpato. Christian Venasco. Daniel Matteo Viteri. Adele Vokanova. Hong Wong. Lok Hei Wong. <laughs> Yi Chen Wong. Edwin Wheeler the Third. Sabrina Widelitz. Madeline Sophia Wilson. Chi Wei Xiao. Yong Jing Shu. <laughs> Wei Wu Yan. <laughs> Roshi Yang. <laughs> Xiao Shi Yang. Yuan Yuan Yo. Fidan Zenelova. How Yu Zhang. Yating Zhao. Yongqi Zhao. Hanzi Zhou. Yangbo Zhou. <laughs> Jiajiang Zhuang. <laughs> Natalie Angelina Ziegler. Zhuo Hong Zhou.
Let's have another round of applause for the class of 2019. <laughs> Students, before we finalize your graduation with the turning of the tassel, I want to ask all parents and family members to remain seated until all faculty and students have completed the recessional into the foyer where you'll be able to reunite with your NB graduate. Members of the North Broward Preparatory School Class of 2019, by virtue of the authority vested in me as your head of school, it is my high honor and privilege to ask you to perform your very last task as high school students. Please stand. <laughs> Members. <laughs> Members of the class of 2019, I hereby confer upon you the degrees with which you have fulfilled all requirements for your high school diploma. Please turn your tassels. Congratulations. Congratulations, graduates of North Broward Preparatory School. On behalf of everybody, we congratulate you. On behalf of everyone at North Broward Preparatory School, we extend to you our sincere congratulations and very, very best wishes.